I'm Philip Pritchard, the Vice President and Curator at the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. In 1988, I started here. I went to a college in Ontario called Durham College. It was a sports administration college. And my placement internship was at the Ontario Hockey League, which was a junior league in Canada. And my boss there got me into the Hockey Hall of Fame in the Resource Centre and kind of moved up from there. When I started at the Hockey Hall of Fame, day five, the Cup had to go north of Toronto and it was a Friday night. We had a small staff at the time and, and no one else could go. And I was the new kid on the block, so I kind of sheepishly put up my hand and said, I'll go if no one else wants to go. So I, I started traveling with the Cup and the Keeper of the Cup motto kind of came from fans actually more than anything else. I don't think they knew what my name was or anything, so they just called me the Keeper of the Cup. The responsibilities of the Keeper of the Cup, more than anything, are, are looking after the world's greatest trophy. It's 130 years old now, it's 36 inches high and about 36 and a half pounds. But being the Keeper of the Cup, you're looking after the, the day-to-day travels of it, the responsibility of it, the promotion of it, the public relations of it. It's kind of like your best friend on the world. For anyone that's worked in a museum, they, everybody always wears white gloves because you don't handle artifacts with your bare skin because all of our fingerprints have oils in them and you don't want that to get onto the artifact. Our thoughts were the Stanley Cup is an artifact. It displays at the Hockey Hall of Fame when it's not traveling, but it's also a current trophy. So why not take the white gloves from behind the scene and preserve it and respect it like it should be as a museum artifact? I'm the main keeper of the cup, but there's four other guys that travel with it as well. It has an amazing schedule because it's it's on the road probably 325 days a year. It travels all the time, constantly going somewhere, whether it's with the championship team that has won it, or whether it's traveling for a promotional or a charity event, or just promoting the game of hockey. Obviously Canada, US, it's been to Mexico, it's been to Bahamas. Finland, Sweden, Czech Republic, Russia, Slovakia, Denmark, Slovenia, Italy, Switzerland, China, Japan. This year we visited our 32nd country. We went below the equator for the first time to Australia. So the list keeps growing. And one day, who knows, we might travel out to outer space. So Lord Stanley was the sixth Governor General of Canada. And the Governor General in Canada is the go-between between our Prime Minister and the royal family in Britain. But Lord Stanley had six kids, three girls and three boys. Two of the boys and one of the girls loved this game of hockey that was in Canada. They convinced good old dad to donate a trophy to hockey. So he went back to Sheffield, England and purchased this little fruit bowl, punch bowl thing, got it engraved in downtown London and brought it back to Canada. And he donated it to amateur hockey. Unfortunately for Lord Stanley, he never saw a Stanley Cup game played, but his name and what he did lives on forever and to this day, 130 years later. If you get a chance to see the Stanley Cup up close, all the engravings are on there. 1893 was the first year it was won. Back then, it was just the team name and the year. But what's great about it, every year since that is still on the Stanley Cup today. Today, because the game has grown and the cup has grown as well, it has the team name, the year, and then has all the players, the coaches, the management, the whole staff, up to 52 names. The process of engraving the Stanley Cup is pretty amazing. It gets engraved in old Montreal. The silversmith's name now is Louise Saint-Jacques. She's a fourth generation silversmith. But each year for about 10 days, she gets the cup itself and it's all hand stamped. And she gets all 52 names on there. And once we run out of space, we actually remove one of the rings and retire it into the Hockey Hall of Fame and add another ring to it. There's some great stories of the Stanley Cup over the years. It's been left at the side of the road. It's been kicked in the Rideau Canal. One of the hockey players' mom had it at her house once and the player left without it. She thought it was a flower pot, so she planted her flowers in there. One of the cool things about traveling with the Stanley Cup is we get to get to all these different countries and cultures. So when they have their day, depending on where we are, they would be drinking out of it or eating out of it. I've seen pierogies eaten out of it, homemade soup, obviously caviar. Kids have had their cereal out of it for breakfast. 
it's not just for the players itself, it's for their families and their kids and their grandparents. A lot of players have had their babies baptized out of it. Uh, they've taken it to cemeteries for uh, past ones and had a moment with them there. So all of those stories, although they sound weird, but when you hear why it happens, it means so much to the Stanley Cup champion. And that's a process in the day of the life of the Stanley Cup. I think the great thing about the Stanley Cup is what it symbolizes. It symbolizes the best in hockey, and it's arguably the greatest trophy in sport. But be able to bring it out and share it with the people, it almost becomes the people's cup. There's a lot of hockey fans out there that love their team and love the game, but they don't have the ability to play pro, but they have the ability to be a fan of their favorite team. It's more than just the guys on the name on the cup. That team on the ice is one thing, but the team is way bigger than that. And the opportunity we get to take it around and show people and listen to people's stories and share their memories, to me, that's what it's all about. And that's what makes it the greatest trophy in sport.